Check out the shares of Disney in the pre-market <clears throat> after the entertainment giant announced uh, that it had beat earnings and also upped its uh, cost-cutting targets. Julia Borston sat down with CEO Bob Iger in an exclusive interview and joins us now with more. Hey, Julia. Good morning to you, Joe. Well, Disney reported those better-than-expected earnings as the company expanded its cost-cutting target by two billion dollars to seven and a half billion streaming subscriber editions of seven million were more than double expectations while the company also dramatically narrowed losses in that d2c division bob Iger telling me he expects streaming growth to continue and he sort of walked back his interest in potentially selling the company's linear networks he said they're seeing more value there than they did initially but as they look to take espn direct to consumer they say everything is on the table we have been considering various strategic options for each of our networks, not necessarily all together, but each of them. We do that as a matter of course for all of our assets because we're, we're aiming to increase shareholder value, obviously. Meanwhile, ESPN was broken out in its own sports division for the very first time, showed a 15 percent increase in operating income as Iger works on the future of ESPN in sports. We obviously are... Um, planning to take ESPN out on a direct-to-consumer basis. We feel great about that. We believe we have an opportunity to strengthen that hand even more by bringing in one or two strategic partners that can add either marketing support, technology support, um, or possibly content support. Iger struck a more bullish tone when it came to talking about advertising than Warner Discovery's David Zaslav did. Iger saying that the ad market is improving. He also talked about seeing great opportunity in digital advertising, which is obviously a big piece of the, the bundling of Disney Plus and Hulu. Uh, you can find my whole interview with Iger on CNBC.com. Joe? I don't know what I'd do, Julie, but I, I, the, the positives uh, that I see, I mean, over the years, we remember all the IP that, that the company sort of collected at what we thought were really high prices but turned into to, to virtual bargains. But I don't know, Pixar, I used to think of it more highly than I do right now for some reason. I, I, I think, and he said he's going to go back into the, the studio side and, and try and write that ship too. And then, you know, I think sports, how can you screw up? Sports is just the one thing we know will always be get so many eyeballs you just got but you got to figure out how to do it and who the partners would be so it, it's yeah, tough well, the, but there's a lot of great stuff there yeah and the guarantee of live viewership for sports is obviously what makes the advertising piece of that um so valuable but joe we got to talk about the strike because when i interviewed Iger, uh he said look he's optimistic that there will be resolution in the strike and then within a couple of hours there was that tentative deal struck um, so there is a lot of hope that with the timing of this deal being approved now, the, the national board of SAG-AFTRA is going to look at this uh, and vote on it on Friday, that there will be um, sort of progress in the ability to get shows up and running pretty quickly and also to finish up or, or start working on some of these movies that are set for release next summer. So the timing of this, Joe, is really essential because it really saves the summer 2024 box office. <laughs> Strikers in, in, in all industries seem to finally figure out, you know, if we really cut off, you know, our employers at the knees, it's probably not good long term for us. I mean, there needs to be some place to strike still around the next time they want to strike. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a really big question here. How is the industry going to be changed on the other side of this? Um, so much of the negotiations here were about streaming and and SAG was really hoping to get effectively a percentage of all streaming revenue. What they and it, they did not get that. But what it seems like they got and we don't have the details of this deal yet was bonuses tied to success in streaming, um, more akin to what the, the writers got um, in those negotiations. But I think we'll have to see how much more it's going to cost for the studios to produce content because they are paying actors and writers higher fees. And the question then, how does all of this, plus the disruption of the past 118 days that actors have not been working, how much does all that change the industry? Will we see studios going forward saying, we're going to make fewer films, we're going to make fewer TV shows? How much of a contraction are we going to see due not just to these strikes, but the overall potentially consolidation of the industry? Well... At least actors will be back at the film festivals, Julia. It was hard for me being the most 
the biggest celebrity at Telluride. It was just, you know, it was difficult. I mean, I was constantly, everybody wanted a piece of me, and, you know, because none of the real, that actually didn't happen. Um, but, Joe, yeah. you're right that actors are really essential, not just at film festivals, but at movie premieres and on, on late night it. talk shows to yeah. promote their content. So one reason we've seen so many films delayed from this fall to the spring is because the studios don't have the actors to help promote them. Um, and so that's one reason why having this this guarantee that or this it seems like there's going to be a guarantee that actors are going to get back to work allows the studios to make sure they have the right timeline for releases and to mm -hmm. know they're going to have the promotional value of those actors, which really can be make or break for the box office of a film. Exactly. <clears throat> and the film I mean, directors just don't, there, there are some that have reached that level, but uh, it helps when, helps when the actor, uh, when the actors are there for the, the whole glitz and the whole, the, you know, the whole feeling of being at a film fest. Julia, thank you very much. Great interview.